So Thursday saw the first of three leaders' debates ahead of the Scottish Parliament elections. It featured Nicola Sturgeon of the SNP, Kezia Dugdale of Scottish Labour, Ruth Davidson of the Scottish Conservatives, Willie Rennie of the Scottish Liberal Democrats, Patrick Harvey of the Scottish Greens, and David Coburn of UKIP. And here are my thoughts on that first debate. The first thing I'll say is that it probably isn't worth your time uh, going to watch it if you haven't already. Either just catch up with a few reviews online or even just this video. The debate itself was a bit cluttered with having six people on stage. The problem is if you have any less than that, you have legitimate grievances because either they have members of the European Parliament or members of the Scottish Parliament representing Scotland and are important to this election. It did mean that there were only four real questions asked and another fluff question. So it means that there are large gaps in policy not explored at all, ranging from things like health to smaller issues such as culture and sport. Also, no one seemed to be able to decide if they wanted to make themselves look good or just make everyone else look bad. Um, and some people got kind of lost in that shuffle. But let's quickly go through the questions. First question was on taxation. Um, and the main things that we have, the Lib Dems and Labour wanting to increase income tax across all bands by 1% to help fund education. The SNP doesn't want to do this as it doesn't want to tax working people anymore. Um, this led to a bit of an argument over whether someone earning £20,000 is poor or not. Um, Labour think they're not, whereas SNP think they are. But I think it comes down to what you need to do with that money. Um, renting a flat alone, uh, or if there's more, more than one person in your household earning that money, you should be alright. But if you're looking to support a whole family on that wage, that tax rise may actually cause difficulties for you. Uh, unsurprisingly, the Conservatives and UKIP don't want people in Scotland being taxed any more than those in England, hence no 1% increase, and upping the 40% threshold like the budget did last week. The Greens, it seems, doesn't have a full tax policy just yet, but Patrick Harvey mentioned having to tax both income and wealth, uh, and completely scrapping the council tax as opposed to just altering it, which both the SNP and Labour have proposed. On welfare, we didn't actually get too much debate. There were quite a lot of consensus on areas. Some parties want to see carers' allowance go up to similar levels as job seekers' allowance. Everyone seemed to think that there were issues with the way that personal independence payments have been handled, um, and although no one seemed to actually want to increase the money given to people receiving the, uh, the independence payments, they were looking at the altering the uh, awarding criteria. There was talk of actually getting rid of the bedroom tax instead of the current moratorium on it as well, and a bit of talk about a new employment agency, but there wasn't really too much debate there for me on that topic. On education, another big topic for the Scottish Parliament, um, Willie Rennie from Lidham started well chatting about the attainment gap between rich and poor and how it starts right from nursery and reiterated the importance of college, which is one of the uh, main things that the 1% tax rise from both Labour and the Lib Dems would be going towards. Um, and both the Greens and the Tories thought that more of the money needed to go to schools themselves rather than going to local authorities and then getting sent down and it can sometimes get lost in bureaucracy as opposed to going to head teachers who know exactly what they want to do with the money. Um, they also said that local authorities needed more control um, over education spending instead of the central government. David Coburn went down what at first I thought was going to be a bit of a good old days angle um, advocating for bringing back grammar schools, but then he also added on the creation of um, technical schools similar, similar to the German model. Um, I don't know enough about it myself, but it does seem a bit bizarre to have a UKIP politician praising German policy. Nicola Sturgeon herself didn't actually talk too much about anything to do with education, uh, first saying that they're going to release more information on education uh, to help people better make their minds up and talked about more childcare and continuing to work on what they've already started. Labour put more focus on education for skills, which again is probably colleges, um, which uh, with those skills in turn boosting the economy and the jobs market. Tuition fees did get mentioned briefly, but only really so that Willie Rennie could get attacked because of the coalition and, go, and the Lib Dems having gone back on their promise in 2010. I personally want to see more talks about tuition fees because it can be an interesting topic, but I'll talk about that later. And I'll on fracking, there was a clear yes from UKIP and the Tories and a no from everyone else. Lib Dems and Greens particularly were mentioning becoming green overall, whereas the Tories and UKIP were more worried about uh, making energy affordable and reducing bills. Rennie was again tacked for overruling the party on fracking as the party's conference actually decided on an evidence-based approach, which is actually the current government policy, although the SNP are now heavily leaning towards no, and it will need to be proved to be like 110% safe before And finally, the fluff question about Donald Trump. Here we learned that even David Coburn thinks he is ridiculous, 
and Labour and SNP had selective memory over who praised them and helped them in the past between making him an uh, international Scot and uh, the help with building his golf course. Patrick Harvey was particularly pleased to mention that he is the only MSP to have ever been accused and cleared of blasphemy after Trump made a uh, public complaint about it. Before the debate, I posted various predictions on Facebook as to what I thought would happen. Um, I'd largely say that these were right, except that I've not seen very many people actually posting about this debate, so I can't do the whole Nicola Sturgeon definitely winning. Kezia Dugdale was maybe there a little bit more than I thought she would be, and David Coburn didn't say anything particularly offensive. But let's have some overall closing thoughts from me. Uh, David Coburn didn't say anything particularly offensive, except apparently something about harming rare birds, which may have gotten a rise of ornithologists. You wouldn't think he would matter in this debate, but he obviously does because everyone took the time to put him down at some point or another. I would just, personally, I would just ignore him and hope that he goes away because I can't see UKIP winning much of this election. Patrick Harvey didn't get particularly angry at anything, so that's a point for him. So he probably came out of this reasonably well. Um, his issue may be that he appears to be an idealist, which is a position he's allowed to be in. The Greens are not going to win the election. He won't win the election. But his ideal situation is a dip in support in the SNP that takes them below a majority so that the Greens are needed to prop them up and then he can get through some of his almost idealist policies. Willie Rennie got a bit of support from the room but the coalition got mentioned and the fact that his party went against the promise, despite the fact every single political party in history has done that at some point or another, um, it was just toxic to him. Uh, the t coalition is still a very toxic concept, especially in Scotland. Despite the fact that the latest budget, a fully Tory one, was so much worse than anything in the coalition, the fact that they worked with the Conservatives and the fact that they broke that one key pledge still just hurts them so, so much. And it take, will take a lot of effort and probably time that they don't have for this election to get people past that. Ruth Davidson started trying to achieve two things. One, make herself sound like a credible opposition to the SNP, and two, distancing herself from London. In terms of distancing herself from London, especially after last week's budget, which was not popular in the slightest, um, she kind of got caught in the middle. She tried to. She said that some things that George Osborne had done, uh, she he had done wrong, but she wouldn't actually outright condemn him. I still feel she has made herself look like this nice Tory, but still a Tory. You'd prefer her to be in charge than you would David Cameron or Michael Gove or George Osborne or any of that lot, but she still is at heart a Tory. Kezia Dugdale did all right, but she didn't really stick out enough for me. Um, she's the newest leader of any of the parties and. She maybe hasn't cemented herself in the role as much as she had, and certainly not cemented herself enough in the public eye. She was the person I knew least about before the debate, and I'd argue that's still probably true now. I mean, she's fine, but she needs to get herself out there more prominent and make sure that people know who she is so that she can uh, improve results at this election. I don't think Nicola Sturgeon was particularly good in this debate, but given she didn't kill anyone or say anything massively racist or horrible, she's fine. She came out swinging against Osborne and is still somehow carving herself into this anti-establishment role, despite the fact the SNP has been in power for nine years in Scotland now. And the irritating about, thing about that is that it seems to work. She was also claiming that since the Tories think she's taxing too high and Labour thinks she's taxing too low, that means that she must be absolutely right. Which sounds like good logic if you're Goldilocks, but it doesn't mean that it'll actually work in real life. So there we have it, the first debate. What were your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Keith, and I've been rambling about politics. I'm totally going to draw attention to him and be like, Nicky's food!